So we we talked about installation of Jenkins and we talked about uh, in integration of Jenkins with the GitHub and we we talked about so many things. So today, what we are going to learn today, we are going to learn about backups actually. So how we back up EC2 data basically, right? And uh, how you know they can be backed up without downtime, like you know stuff like that. So what what we will do today? Let me go just you know create an EC2 instance actually. What I will do, I will create EC2 instance from my AMI. From my Jenkins AMI, you can do anything. You, this is nothing, I'm not going to do anything with the Jenkins, but I have some data, right? I wanna take back up from the data, okay? And you know, if you are taking AMI, right? And if you are taking AMI means it is gonna stop the instance and take an AMI and it is gonna start back that instance basically. Okay, so that's what happens. No images. This is my image actually. Okay, that's fine. I thought I deregistered re that AMI, but okay. So let me create an instance, okay? So we understood this, right? This is the T2 dot micro means like one CPU, one GB RAM, stuff like that, right? And the next, and we are, you see that this EBS only, this is the data basically the elastic block storage. This is the storage. So what, what we do for the backup of the application servers or backup, backup of the database servers or backup of the web servers, we'll take backup of this EBS volumes and they're called snapshots. No, dime, no downtime, no stop the instance, nothing. And let me launch this and I'm gonna launch it. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, uh, you know, uh, install some, maybe, you know, Git or Jenkins, right? And I can create a backup. This time I can create snapshots basically. And I can use those snapshots to create an AMI. I'm not creating AMI from instance, I'm creating AMI from snapshots. And once AMI is ready, I can use that AMI to back up the servers basically. Hey, why we are doing that? Okay. Let's say if you, like I mentioned earlier, the backup of the snapshots or whatever, we, most of the companies, they take two to three weeks backup because they, that means they have a 21 sets of the old, like, you know, today's and yesterday's and day after. If something wrong with the today's backup and we take backup from yesterday, like we create instance from yesterday's backup. If something wrong with yesterday's, today's and today's older. Of course, we are losing some data, but we're not losing that data. We have a 21 days of backup, right? And things like that. So if needed, we create AMI to launch the server. If not, no. But when do we create AMI special? That's a good question. For dev, dev tools, like a Jenkins, Nexus, Maven, Bitbucket, these are all like a dev tools, development tools, basically. And, you know, DevOps tools. And, you know, those kind of tools, will be taken AMI and they will report outage, hey, we are working on a maintenance or we are working on you know AMI creation for this Jenkins mission. And the Jenkins mission will be down 40 minutes, 12.30 a.m. to one o'clock a.m. Half an hour downtime, okay? Like that, they will take backup. For application backups, right? 
let me connect to this instance and let me install the other way of taking a backup is creating snapshots for just you know just stay with me it's going to be pretty straightforward very simple and let me log into my ec2 machine can you guys see my screen is it too small i'm going to increase the server no not size can someone tell me what i'm how i'm increasing the you know size font size what i will do i'll just install some java instead of installing uh, vishnu we can use our ami when we are okay, creating ec ec2 instance yes you can you can do that but i did not have that ami yeah 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 okay. so you can do that yes and uh, i'm going to install some git i'm going to create a user I want you to guys write down each and every service that you are working on. I want you to guys have a document and each and every service that you are learning, each and every service that you are working on will go to the document. So it will be very easy for you to troubleshoot, for understand what exactly you are doing and how it is going to help you for your future and everything. So if you are planning to work like this, you are going to be work like at least you know 15 to 20 years so it is okay to spend like you know five four months a little bit extra time because you are building your path for next 15 years so don't think like okay i know how to install a package i don't need a command or i don't need a document don't think something like that okay just letting you know install some git iphone y Okay. Now I have, let me create one user as well. Chmod. What is the command to create user? User add, add. that I can call Jenkins user, for example. Wait sudo add user jenkins user ls iphone home okay sudo pass wd jenkins user you want to give now i have i have two users and i have installed some prerequisites right okay let's go actually you know what let's install uh, apache as well okay and the command to install apache apache is nothing but httpd httpd okay i have a feeling that there is an extra, extra space over here yes i was right okay and once apache installed we deploy a small web application just i'm going to copy that web application code because I'm not a web, web developer, you know, and uh, Apache is a web server. Yes, it mm -hmm. is a web server. Yes, Jenkins is also kind of a server, right? It's not it's a server, right? Jenkins Jenkins, server. Yeah, Jenkins is a tool basically. Jenkins is a tool. We are installing that tool on the server, but mm -hmm. Apache is a web server, like a web application deployments. Okay. Yeah, Jenkins is also like a website, like but it has you know it is a Continuous integration and a continuous deployment tool, basically third-party tool to deploy the code and stuff like that. Okay. okay. And uh, I have installed a package. Now I want to check the status of the package. What command should I use? Each. Okay. I can start the package first, right? Start. HTTPD, right? In this is the this is a service name, right? 
and the system CTL is a command to start, enable, stop, or whatever the service. Now service name. It was Jenkins earlier. Now Apache HTTP. Okay. Now enable the service. Enable the service. Okay. Now check the status of the service. Okay, Apache is running. Okay. Now, so let's deploy a small web application. Okay. But I don't know any web application. Let me get some code. Sample. Web. Page HTML. Okay. Okay. Let me let me get the code from here. Okay. And uh, where is that? Uh, HTML code to deploy HTML code to register course, something like that. College course, right? How people, you know, register for course or something. Register form. Code to create a register form. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, let's go there. And uh, okay, this is the registration, right? And uh, but there is no code here. Okay, let me get the code. Yeah, this is the code. Okay, and uh, copy the whole code. Is control A is gonna work? Yes. And okay. Now what I will do, I'll go to that server. So there are some default files actually. Apache, there is a default folder. You be you should deploy the code in the default folder only. Then only Apache will take that website. Apache will run that code basically behind the scenes. So the default website is let me go, let me log in as a root user, cd, where www.html, and go there. Next, create index.html file. Index.html file. Okay, shift, and just save this file, and restart the service. Even I don't have to restart the service. I think let's go here and then let's change. Should I change anything in, from instance side in order to access this website on the server? Inbound traffic. Exactly. So let me go there. Okay. Let me go to that security group. Okay. This is the inbound role clearly. It is accepting traffic from port 22. Nothing but that is SSH connection only. So I can go to the security group and I can change that security group inbound route. So I'll just simply allow all traffic because I'm kind of lazy to spend a lot of troubleshooting time. I hope you guys are not lazy like me. So we just change the inbound security group rules and uh, let's go to that instance type. And uh, I can just simply copy here and open a new tab. 
I'm just run this. You see that registration email. So enter your email, enter your password, repeat your email. We just deployed a web application, right? So now I want, now I want to take backup of this web application. Are we clear till now? Can, can I get the same thing with using the IP address also, right? Okay. So, so if you, you copy the public DNS and all, right? Can you get the same thing with IP address also? Let's try that. So, HTTP yes, not yes, because there is no secure layer. And enter. Yes, same thing. Okay. okay. Remember, I did not mention any port. Okay. Yeah. This yes. Is a default website. Basically, when we deploy this, this code in the index.html file inside www HTML folder, that's what it looked for. Okay. So the behind the Apache will take care of these things basically. Is that clear? Lata, are you there with me? But when you install Apache, like we did not use the get command first, right? That was initially for Jenkins and all we got get first and kind of we downloaded it first, then we installed. Yeah, because Jenkins repo is not available, like you know, like Apache, Apache binaries basically. So the Apache binary is available in the centralized repository. So what that means is when we are trying to install a package using yum, so what it does is it is going to pull the package from whatever the package is available in that Linux, like a centralized repository. Okay. okay. Like that Apache is available. Apache HTTPD package is available in the centralized Linux repository. But Jenkins repo is not. So in order to do that, but where the Jenkins repo is available in the Jenkins website. So what we did there, we cloned that repository locally. That means we copied that repo to local and we just executed that file. In order to execute that file, we needed a key. And how we are getting that key? From their website only. So we got a key and we got a repo. We downloaded the repo to our local computer. Then we executed that repo. Okay. okay. Is that clear? We did not do uh, same thing for Java as well. We just did M install Java, right? Java is available in the centralized Linux repository. Okay. Is that make sense? Kiran Mai, are you there with me? Yes, Vishnu. Radhika, are you clear? Yes, Vishnu. Lata, are you there? Did you join back? Yeah, yes, Vishnu, I'm here. Are we clear till this website deployment? Mm. Okay. When you guys try, and we'll be clear, okay? Yeah. Now, let's take a backup of this server. And... Uh, and let's create like, you know, uh, backup of the server and uh, let's see what happens. So I have this server has, a, you see that devices, one is root device, one is block storage. Is that the same? Yes. So this server has only one EBS volume. If I click on this EBS volume, right? You see that? This is the volume ID, okay? And what I can do, just click on that volume ID, go to actions, create a snapshot. And Apache, I can call. You see the namings, right? How, the, how I'm naming the resources so that I can remember, okay? Don't just put like a test or, you know, file dot or test dot, you know, don't put something like that, okay? You can even have an include date as well, something like that, Apache, whatever date, okay? Create a snapshot. Snapshot will be created. Okay, if I go here, you see that I'm still into the DC2 instance because when I'm taking backup of the EBS volume, it doesn't affect instance at all, okay? And let's go here again. 
snapshot will be right in a minute. VPS volume is basically the hard drive of that uh, server, is it? Yes, that's correct. Yes. EBS volume is, yes, that's correct. So you are taking backup for that, you know, uh, from, for that, you know, uh, the hard drive. And once your backup is ready, you know, you will be taking an AMI. Or the other thing you can do is you can create an EBS volume from this snapshot. And you can attach that EBS volume to your instance as well. Okay. And, but we will take an AMI so that you will know what are the two ways that you can create an AMI. So we can create an AMI from the server itself. We know that already because we are, we've been creating AMIs from the instance, right? Now, so what I want us to do that, I want us to create an AMI from the snapshots create an image. I wanted to show you like, you know, my, I'm still connected to this server. So just want to make sure. Snap image Apache. <laughs> That's a tough name. Even if I want to add extra, extra EBS volume to this ima image, I can do that as well. But I'm okay with this right now. So let's go to that image. Image has been created and image is available right now. Now, I will. what I will do, I'll go just launch instance from the backup. I'm still connected to this instance. So image is ready but instance was not stopped or whatever, okay? Just simply, I'll just launch. Create baseline key and launch instance. Click on the server. I like to give a name, backup backup Apache. Backup Apache, okay. Okay, so now let's go and check the inbound rules for this backup Apache as well. It's still there. Let's go to our instance. Okay. Now let's go to our security group. Right. I just wanted to verify whether this, you know, will allow the traffic. It's not. So I'll add that rule to allow the traffic. Okay. And we'll just save the rule. Now I can go back to that easy to again. So Vishnu, now we have backup instance and uh, actual instance, right? Two yes. instances. Yes, but I will make sure that, you know, I will make sure that backup instance is ready to use. Then I can terminate the old instance, okay? So I just wanted to show you how we recover, how we can recover the server from backups. And we have two ways. One way is create an AMI and mm -hmm. use that AMI to build a brand new server. 
the other way is create snapshots for your EBS volumes and use that EBS volumes to create an AMI and use that AMI to build your server, an extra step, okay? This is the backup. Now I can just go here, just, you know, uh, copy that. And this is 168, right? You see that 96, 168, right? And I can go here, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. This is 234. That's funny. You see that? I just recovered my instance from backup. Any questions, any doubts? No questions? Okay. So we are not done yet for today. No questions, right? Are you sure no questions? Uh, we, create, we took a snapshot of the EBS, EBS volume and created image out of that EBS volume. And then exactly. The new, uh, an extra step, yes, an extra step. So you are creating a backup for your EBS volume. Okay. Okay, let's say I have a, I have a five EBS volumes attached to the server, right? For example, I have five EBS volumes. So you can create snapshots for your five EBS volumes so that you will have five snapshots and you will use that five snapshots to create an AMI. So have, we have to use all of them, right? Otherwise it will not be complete uh, image. Yeah, you can use, let's say some of them, you don't want them. Or for example, you have, uh, you know, four, four EBS volumes attached to your instance when you create that instance. And uh, they're not really, you know, uh, out of memory, but you have added an extra EBS volume and you wanna, you, you don't wanna include that in your AMI. So you will have an option to limit your Snapshots as but, well. But how do we know, like, maybe the, the, the new new instance, like tags. a new EVS volume has got some data on it? How do we people, know? Data? People add tags, basically. So people add tags for each resource, okay? Including date and the instance name, things like that. So my question is, let's say I added five, five EVS volumes to a particular server and I installed a Git and all these things. Some, some, we don't know where it got installed and which EVS volume to use to install. So I have to take, uh, when I take image, I have to take all of them together. Yes, you okay. have to, yes. Okay. Yes, you have to. In that case, yes, absolutely. Any other questions from anybody? So one instance have more values, one, uh, one or more values? EBS volumes, yes. Let's say mm -hmm. I have this instance, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what I want to do, for example, I want to add an extra EBS volume. Okay. So what I can do is attach, 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 attach. Okay. So what I can do is I can go to EBS volume dashboard, which is nothing but easy to dashboard, okay? Now, I don't have any EBS volume available. So I'll create EBS volume, for example, with a, with a 30 GB or whatever GB, okay? And the EBS volume should be same, same availability zone as your EC2 instance, okay? And let's check which availability zone in our EC2 instance is like, you know? Let's go to EC2 dashboard. Let's go to EC2 dashboard and uh, we'll just verify the availability zone of our instance. Okay. So if you look at this instance, where is it? Can you see anything? No? Okay. Let's select this instance. 
we select this instance, can you see the availability zone, like a 2A or something like that? You see that 2C actually, right here. Yes, is to 2C. So we would have to create PBS volume in the same yes is to 2C. And I can call it like, like you know, uh, Apache, something like that. Okay. Create EBS volume. Now, this EBS volume is available, right? It is an available state. So, what I can do, I can select the EBS volume actions, attach volume to this instance ID, whatever instance ID. This is that backup Apache. Now, yeah, that's fine. Attach it. Okay. Go back to our instance now. Okay. We just you know refresh this instance and if i click on this instance we we will see two devices actually you see that sdf that is the second ebs volumes second ebs volume that we just added and this is the root device ebs volume so we will have a two ebs volumes sdf and sda and that's how you know we can add EBS volume. And if we want to take backup, we will have to create two snapshots for this one snapshot each, and I use those two snapshots to create an AMI. And I use that AMI to rebuild the server. Any questions from anybody? So we can add values in backup Apache, backup only or that instance yes yes even when you create let's say you have snapshots right for example you have a, a snapshot right and you wanna create you wanna create a ami with this snapshot create an ami with this snapshot still you can add ebs volume from here as well okay and you can you know just you have any snapshot or you can give it or if you don't have anything just that, that's okay it's going to create an ebs volume and it's going to attach that ebs volume to your instance basically let's put like a 10 gb for example and create okay name must to be second backup for example something like that and create it you see that so this AMI will have a two EBS volumes, basically. AMI doesn't have any EBS volumes, but this AMI include the value with a 18 GB and whatever the data in it. Okay, that's what it means. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna detach this AMI and I'm gonna detach all this EBS for snapshots. I'm gonna delete them. Okay, currently used by AMI. So if the snapshot is used by an AMI, you cannot delete the snapshot. So what you need to do, you need to go there and detach that AMI first. That means deregister that AMI, then go back here and delete, delete that snapshot as well. and go to instance and terminate that instance. But I will terminate that instance after the class. Any questions from anybody? Like why we deleted everything? Because I, I don't want to pay. Okay, look, so after we creating, look, okay. Maybe yeah, deleted. so yeah. If you have a money, like if you have a million dollars, you can keep it, <laughs> but 
no no i thought okay like as if like ami we are keeping it right so i thought okay we can keep this you can keep it also yeah you can keep it and you have to keep it so that you don't have to do that again but for me yeah i can delete it okay any other questions i just wanted to show you how to delete them as well so that's why i deleted them actually okay no questions so instead of creating all the time instances so backup and like snapshots would be like you know you can update or have whatever we did in instances yes so the best thing the, my suggestion is keep one ami and create like a make changes create one more ami so the old ami will be replaced with a new changes again the same thing vice versa that's what i i would suggest actually so that you will have all your work in that ami okay that's not yet so do this as an assignment same create an instance install apache mm -hmm. and i'm going to send this document as well i'm going to send you know code for this document as well this is the code i will i will share this link as well okay deploy this code into that website folder www html where www html create a file called index.html and deploy this code okay and change the inbound roles in your security group and try to access this website from the web web server basically okay that's not yet and we we been creating in ami right we been creating an ec2 instance right but is it possible to create any easy to instance with any automation like how every time let's say we 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 need an instance and we are creating manually how about we need 100 instances how about we we need to create an instance today and uh, delay tomorrow for testing and uh, create one more day after tomorrow how does that work like you cannot spend hours and hours to install all these things and uh, you know create instances is there any way that we can write an automation script so that we can use that script to create instances again and again is there any way yes there are a lot of tools that are available in the market and you can write python script or you can write ansible script and you can write terraform script or you can write a cloud formation script anything so the cloud formation is aws service basically people use the cloud formation you know uh, to create instances so what we will do i can i can like explain a cloud formation stack what it does and how it works okay and i can give you an assignment to create a cloud formation as well stack to create an ec2 instance okay so the cloud formation will be written in yaml or json okay and what is yaml what is json we know text file right what is text file text file is like a text we we will have a text what is java file java file will you know will have a java code basically the extension is dot java python will have a python code the the extension is dot py python dot py shell script is the extension is dot shell and uh no js is dot js things like that the yaml and json are simply human readable scripts you see that this is a yaml file and this is all code actually basically this is a line by line very powerful human readable code basically okay yaml and json are format and you can write either yaml file or json file for cloud formation okay once your yaml file or json file is ready all you need to do is just to go to cloud formation cloud formation dashboard in aws okay cloud formation dashboard in aws okay 
create a stack. You see that template is ready. So you have that YAML or JSON file cloud formation stack. And you can save it in somewhere in S3 bucket, which is a storage for full storage service for AWS. But I can upload a template file from my computer and choose that file. Have that file ready and choose that file and just save next button and just to click create. So you will see an EC2 instance will be created. Okay. Any questions? So I will share that file. I would have to look for that file. I think I should have that file. And I will share that file with you. Once you deploy your web application and uh, created backups and everything, then create one more instance using cloud formation stack. Okay. Once you think the cloud formation stack is ready, right? And yeah, for don't you don't need to push it to the GitHub for now, but I'll tell you, you need to do something before you push it, but I'll tell you that later. Create EC2 instance using automation script with a cloud formation. That is the assignment as well. Any questions from anybody? No questions? Actually, Vishnu, today we do first one, first 